Today we're doing the uh, Mexican lager. Do you want anything else? Just a peaceful hour to drink it in. Uh, the BJ, BCJP guidelines uh, classify it as an international pale lager. Uh, it's in category 2A. The Mexican lager doesn't have its own classification. Uh, it falls into the international pale lager classification. Um, it's a lager that is generally brewed with adjuncts and designed to appeal to a wide range of drinkers. The German and Austrian immigrants brought their brewing techniques to Mexico in the 19th century after Mexico gained their independence from Spain. The local brewers adapted the recipe to local conditions using ingredients available in Mexico. Corn was commonly used in Mexican agriculture, becoming a significant ingredient, adding a lighter body and slightly sweeter flavor. Uh, there's also a Vienna lager influence. The style closely resembles the Vienna lager, characterized by its amber color and malt forward flavors. And then as lighter lagers gained popularity, Mexican brewers adjusted the Vienna lager template, leading to a paler and crisper version. In the early 20th century, large breweries began shaping the Mexican beer market. So brands like the Guapo, Modelo, and Cervecia Cuatimac, I guess, played crucial roles in popularizing the style, both domestically and internationally. And then today's Mexican lagers typically light in, are lighter in color and body with a clean, refreshing taste. It often features a subtle, subtle hop uh, presence and a clear, crisp finish, making it highly drinkable and suitable for warm climate. So the recipe for our Mexican lager today, uh, I use four pounds, 10 ounces of Pilsner, four pounds, 1.7 ounces of Vienna malt, one pound, 7.4 ounces of flaked corn. Uh, and then my hops were 0.31 ounces of Magnum, which were added at 60 minutes. And then 0.31 ounces of Motecchio in, at 15 minutes. And I went with the Motecchio hops because they add a, a lime and lemon uh, aroma and flavor to the beer. And I figured like uh, most like your Mexican lagers will say Corona. Uh, people like to put a lime in that. A lot of that reason is to sort of cover up the skunkiness of that beer. Um, but I do like the lime a little bit. So I went with the Motecchia hops, uh, which will bring, will, should bring out a nice, you know, a lemon lime aroma and flavor. And then we finished it up with Mexican lager. I used White Labs WLP 940 for the uh, yeast. We did a step mash on this one. Uh, we started at 142 and held it at 142 for 15 minutes. And then we bumped it up to 152 and we held it at 152 for 60 minutes. And then after that, we bumped it up to 160. We held it at 160 for 15 minutes. And then we mashed out at 168 for a 10 minute mash out. Then we pulled the grain basket, let it drain for approximately 10 minutes. And then we reached boil. We put in our first edition of hops, which were the Magnum hops. 15 minutes left, we did our Man Mantuco hops and also yeast nutrient and Warflock tablet. And here we're just filling the fermenter, getting it ready for the yeast.
and then we're adding in our oxygen. So here is my Mexican lager. This came out almost crystal clear, um, except for a little chill haze. I think uh, very pale. Um, we'll go over some of the stats for this one. So my original gravity was 1.046. The BJCP guidelines uh, recommended it be between 1.040 and 1.50. So we're almost dead center between the two. My final gravity was 1.010, and the guidelines indicate that it should be between 1.004 and 1.010. <clears throat> My alcohol content, 4.7%, um, which also fits in between the guidelines of 4.5 and 5.5%. So on this one, it um, from the end of the brew day, fermented 32 days. <clears throat> um, I did my diacetyl rest, uh, that was on the 15th day, so just about halfway through. That lasted until the 19th day, so about four days long I did my diacetyl rest. And then down to cold crash until we finished up, you know, about 13 days later. The SRM is 4.1 on this. Uh, it should be between two and eight, so we're just right about in the middle. The IBUs on this one were 22.5, which uh, is just a hair above what they recommend in the guidelines, which is between 8 and 20. Um, but it uh, came out really well. So we're going for aroma. You are getting a, you're getting a little bit of the lime. I'm getting a little bit of lime from the hops. I think if I dry hop this, um, it would be a a lot better but I didn't <clears throat> but I'm getting some lime aroma um, not a huge you know hop characteristic on this one um, I'm getting a like a sweet malty aroma um, just a just a little bit of corn not much, but man, I'm liking the hop uh, aroma that's coming off of this one. Taste? Yeah, you're getting a little bit of that lime. Man, I like that comes out nice. So you're getting a little bit of sweetness. Um, very smooth. <clears throat> Just a little bit of a, the corn undertones, nothing back uh, overly powerful in regards to the corn. Uh, dry finish. Hardly any bitterness uh, at all on this. <laughs> yeah, those hops, man. I'm, I'm very surprised at those hops. It's actually, there is a nice, just a subtle lime uh, flavor from those hops. And as I said, the uh, clarity is good. Um, you know, very light, just a gold color. Really, really beautiful looking beer. Um, I actually think it might, might want to be a little bit darker next time. Maybe, it's hard to darken it up though when you're using, um, Pilsner in Vienna, but I, you can darken a little bit. Mouthfeel, moderate carbonation, <clears throat> very smooth, um, no stringency, it's not harsh at all. Very crisp, um, definitely meets the expectations. Um, very pleased with this beer, very pleased with this beer. This is my first attempt at a Mexican lager. <laughs> Um, light lager. Well, I did a uh, Czech pale lager. wasn't really a light lager. <clears throat> the Hellas is a light lager, but totally different um, beer. Uh, definitely different than the Hellas and uh, the Czech pale lager. Uh, 
if you use these Motecchio, I think that's how it's pronounced and I forgot, um, hops, very good, especially something like this. Um, can't remember where I came across these or what gave me the idea. Um, I may have done a Google search just on a lemon lime uh, aroma flavor hop <clears throat> and I found these um, and they're pretty popular. They're, they're it's not uh, some obscure hop, they've been around. So definitely a good hop though. I, I really like this hop. We're at the end of the video. Um, again, like and subscribe. Uh, if you make this one, you know, we're at the uh, end of April. We're just going into about May 1st. So I wanted to get this done for Cinco de Mayo. Um, awesome planning by my part. So this one uh, goes out to the uh, summertime beer lovers and uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. Have a beer, have some tequila, have a good weekend. Peace, guys. Thanks for coming in. See you next time.